Hey everybody, Dave Lindbergh here in Irvine, California today at the headquarters of Sentient with James Fife, Director of Sales. Um, James, we're here to find out more about Sentient and the application. It's got a lot of purpose for IoT devices as things are evolving with their user interfaces. So um, I don't want to jump too far ahead, but can you just tell us a bit about where Sentient came from and what's the reason for the energy? Certainly, certainly, thank you. Yeah, so, uh, so Sentient was founded here in Irvine, California. Um, in mid-2017 with the idea to build a deep learning processor, an AI processor, to, to more efficiently recognize audio events. And in this case, I'm speaking more in terms of wake words if you think of things like Alexa, OK Google, and other command words if you think of, for example, controlling a, uh, an earbud or something like that to say answer call, ignore call, volume up, volume down. We saw that the, uh, the exploding market for earbud space, for example, that, uh, that, that to have a, a much more efficient processor, and in this case, we're talking like two orders of magnitude more efficient to address this market. And when I say efficiency, I'm talking about power consumption, wow. and I'm also talking about size and performance, latency, throughput, much, much more efficient processor than what exists today. All right, well, let's, let's throw up the next slide and give people a real picture of what certainly, we're talking certainly. about size. I mean, a lot of people know like uh, power consumption. We're talking, I think, 140 microwatts when yes. it's always listening. Yes, that's, yeah. that's incredible. That, that is incredible. So this, this slide here shows the NDP100. This is our device actually shown here on the penny. You can see mm. how small it is. It's actually 1.4 by 1.8 uh, millimeters, so it's a very, very small device. It gets lost in the crease of your of your, <laughs> of of your, your hands, of your yeah. hand as you as you hold it, and it truly does. It's very small. Um, but we designed it to be very low power, and and so the impact to battery life is minimal. You right. mentioned 140 it's, microwatts. It's like the trickle That's, drain, basically. Exactly. It's, a, it's it's tiny. It's 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 the leakage current of a, of a of a leading edge ASIC. So it's very very minimal. So you can put it in battery powered applications and, and, and have minimal draw on your, on your, on your battery power. Um, being that it's small and a very simple device, as you can see, there's only 12 IOs on this, on this device. Mm -hmm. it, um, it's very quick and easy, straightforward to design in. So very easy to design this in and time to market is, is really reduced. Um, we talked about the smallest footprint, very, very, very tiny. And given that it's small, it's also cost effective. Yeah, for those that really know about semiconductor industry, the size really dictates. Uh, so yeah, it's, yeah. it's very cost effective. So yeah. don't be shy to contact us. Um, let's keep going here. Certainly, so yeah. it's yeah, it's device intelligence in the future. A lot, yeah. of everything is portable. Everything's battery uh, operated. So besides the, the power consumption, there's some other key benefits to incorporating certainly. this chip. Certainly. So so I mean, we look at. Uh, the whole move today is really to move the intelligence out of the out of the data center, really get it out to the edge, get it out to the device. Our thinking is is to get the decision making and the intelligence as close to where the data is generated as possible. Right. So, so if you look at uh, the types of products that we're going into, shown here, you see images of a watch, the camera, yeah. cell phones, drones, and hearing aids and, and earbuds. Yeah. So, and that's those are really exploding markets for us, and we've got key engagements in several of these products. But one of the key things is that we're able to do the the wake word detect and the audio event detect without having to go to the cloud. We don't right. need a cloud network or connection to cloud to get a confirming right. network. We're so. able to do that all locally. Now, when you do that, there are several advantages, and I've listed four here. Of course, the privacy, of course, that's a big issue today. Yeah is uh, you know, a lot of customers are not wanting to have their, their product that maybe sits in their living room connected to the cloud and, mm -hmm. and having to be listening to their conversations all the time. So we cut that, we cut that connection. We were not, no longer tethered to the cloud, so we, we, we increased the privacy. Right. And, and so that, that's, that's a key element. Uh, you do that as well, you, 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 uh, you increase the reliability. And the responsiveness. Every time that you need to go to the cloud and have a cloud so send, there's a latency, send, there. there's latency there. Right. So it's like a half a second latency, and that's huge. Right. Uh, so we cut that, we reduce that, we eliminate that latency. And then, of course, if we're not having to wake up all these other components to to access the cloud, um, we decrease power, and of course, that increases battery life. So everything can be done locally on the edge, yeah. close to where the data is being generated. So we killer, think that's a really a key killer element. application. You can always. Imagine people pressing the elevator button, thinking that it will go faster yes. by pressing it. 
And it, the same thing with voice devices yeah. is like Alexa, Alexa, Alexa. But it's it takes that lag, and people exactly. have this kind of intrinsic reaction to like, oh, it's not reacting. I need to hit it again yeah. or speak yeah. to it again. But with this, that kind of mitigates those yeah. issues. And we've seen that, it, and it's really it's really noticeable it, when you're comparing our device doing everything locally to something else that has to go to the cloud, right. you, you, you see it immediately. The, right. the, the, the latency, the reduction of latency is, is really, really noticeable. All right, let's keep going. Certainly, certainly. So, you know, let's, yeah. let's look at a real real world uh, comparison here. So um, this slide shows the Cintian NDP100. This right. is the product that we are shipping today. It's fully qualified, fully characterized. We're gonna compare, compare the Cintian NDP100 to a a competing device, which right. is, uh, let's say, the ARM M4, which we often find that we're competing against. And this is a CPU that is running a stored program. It's running a program to recognize the wake word, where if you look at ours, it's a purpose-built processor for doing inference on the edge. And again, we've designed it to be this way, and we were able to get the, the efficiencies out of it. So if we look at energy per decision or energy per inference, um, the Ascentian NDP100 consumes only 3.4 microjoules of energy. If you compare that to 658 microjoules for the for the CPU, right, and that's a that's a factor of 200. That's two orders of magnitude improvement in, in efficiency. But usually, when you have a reduction in power or big change in power between one device and another, mm -hmm. that usually co coincides with a reduction in throughput, and that's not the case here. Right. So if we look at max throughput for our device, using this particular example, we are able to have 100 frames per second in throughput, mm -hmm. and compare that to the uh, the ARM processor, it's only five frames per second. Wow. So usually you see, you know, kind of reverse of that. Um, if you've got low power consumption, you get lower throughput. That's not the case here. And of course, um, inference time, which relates to the throughput, is also much lower ours compared to the, uh, the should I say, the Cintian NDP100 compared to the ARM M4. So if you look at the Cintian uh, NDP100 is less than 10 milliseconds, compared to 211 milliseconds for the ARM M4. So, right. and that is really... That's a tangible a, difference, and, and, and it's a, 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 people would recognize that. Typically, you, you like if you talk that. about pro audio, they say the latency is detected in five milliseconds. So any pro audio, so an average person is not gonna really even de detect the latency with this kind of device. No, no, yeah. and, and if you were comparing it though then to, a, to another device, that 200 milliseconds, you definitely see. Oh, it. for sure. You definitely see. It. And I should point out that the, the, the numbers I've got here are from the public domain. Um, it's from the Hello Edge paper, which is a pretty pretty well publicized and, and well uh, referenced paper right. in the public domain. Yeah, we can put the link down below on the yeah. video so yeah. people can click on that. Sure. All right, let's keep going. Sure. So this uh, this slide talks of the focus areas of our product, the NDP 100. So talked a lot about wake words, and that's really a key a key function. We see that, of course, uh, very common in the marketplace today with uh, the Amazon Dots and, mm -hmm. and other other products that are looking for wake words like Alexa, OK Google, Hey Siri, and others. Right. Um, but we're also able to... Uh, <laughs> hey Siri, just woke up. <laughs> I just woke up my phone. Um, we're also able to uh, do speaker identification. And what that is, is, is the ability to recognize is it me speaking? Is it you, Dave, right. speaking? Yeah. Or is it somebody else speaking? We're able to do that in the field when the device is already installed in the field. We can have, say, a family of five right. be able to repeat the the wake word of choice five or six times, and, and it can recognize the mother or the father. Based on yeah. who's talking, yeah. Exactly. If you want to keep your kid from going, as well. yeah. yeah. If you want your if you want to keep your kid from going on Amazon Whatever, and wait yeah. and ordering all kinds of things, maybe you can keep uh, you can keep them from doing right. that by having to recognize certain voices. Um, and also, we, we we talk about command words, and this is this is the ability to to you know speak to your volume your, up, volume, volume down, exactly. answer call, hang up. That's that's killer, especially yeah. with these. These true wireless earbuds are yeah. tiny, like you're you supposed to, have to double touch tap. Them. Yeah. Like, let's let's yeah, cut no, that let's out. Just, let's just go straight to giving it commands. And so that's a key element. And we've been we've been building up a, a huge uh, vocabulary of these types of words for our products and our customers. So, so that's been really key. And, and cool. uh, many of our engagements are in the earbud space, earbud and, and, and hearing aid space. So sure. this is really key for us. Okay. So this is a slide of the NDP100. It's a very high level block diagram. Um, you can see it's what we call a um, neural decision processor. That's what the NDP is for. Right. And, and basically it's, it's 
you can see it's a simple device, has very few IOs. It's shown it's, it's only 12 IOs, but basically you, you feed in a, a digital audio stream into the, uh, into the front end of the device. It uh, converts it into the frequency domain and it extracts features. We pump that through the, the deep neural network uh -huh. and it's able to have, if we set it up, we can have it recognize up to 63 different events, right. different, different events, different audio events. And uh, so when one of those events occurs, we issue an interrupt to the, uh, um, mm -hmm. to the app's processor. It comes back and queries the device to the spy interface to, to determine which of the 63 events has occurred. Right, and, uh, so, and then those 63 events, you've uh, Sentient's partnered with Sensory to help develop um, these command words or wake words yes. in multiple languages with multiple accents and all this kind of stuff. So it's not a concern that you know, somebody from Ireland or something won't be able to. Well, Ireland stuff, but no, yeah, uh, yeah, no a, we, we recognize all kinds of accents. In fact, we, we do a lot of the data collection ourselves. Okay. We work with third parties, per, third parties as well to, to collect this data. We build the models ourselves too, but we also have worked with, and we recently signed a deal with uh, Sensory, to, mm -hmm. we're working with their data yeah. as well. So that, that certainly broadens our, our capabilities in terms of, of uh, um, you know, um, vocabulary of words sure. out there and, and you know, gets us into you know other markets as well right I also also noticed not to interrupt but I noticed that it says two mics but what I do understand is that uh, for close talk at least it can actually operate with a single microphone so that almost makes it like cost neutral to add this to a voice command device because you only need a single mic where almost every other voice command uh, architecture requires two mics. Exactly, exactly. So yeah, we, we for example, we've, we've passed um, Amazon AWS uh, AVS um, right. uh, certification for close talk using a single mic. Wow. So that, that's pretty key for us. Cool. And, uh, and you know, just to point out, uh, I think we've talked a lot about this, but it's, it's only 140 microwatts with which you can is a tiny amount of current. That's nothing. All right, let's keep see what we got left to talk about certainly, here. Certainly, certainly. Okay. So this uh, this slide really just kind of shows the type of engagements that we do, in particular for for earbuds and wearables. And mm -hmm. usually we're we're paired with uh, some kind of a Bluetooth SOC. Um, so you got you can see our device um, interfacing to a Bluetooth SOC and a right. microphone. And we're working with all of the key Bluetooth SOC manufacturers. Yeah, so out your there. Qualcomm, so Qualcomm extension program, I think it's called. Exactly. So okay. we did we did a press release uh, during CES 2020 this year, with talks about our, our partnership with Qualcomm, but we're also working with Cypress, Iroha, uh, Pistech, and others. I mean, we're working with all of, all of the really the mm -hmm. key um, Bluetooth SOCs. And suppliers. reference designs are available for people looking to integrate. Yeah? Exactly. Exactly. Cool. So it's 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 a very straightforward uh, product to design, and uh, again we've we've got a lot of activity, a lot of activity, a lot of customer engagements, and a lot of design wins. So we're happy. Killer, about that. yeah, no. And this slide kind of goes all the markets we're yeah. after. The people that know me know that I'm on the the hunt for earbuds and smart speakers and hearing aids and such, but. There's yeah, a lot of IoT so, stuff. Yeah, or a broad PC. swath of uh, yeah. engagements that we have, design wins in feature phones, earbuds, smart smart speakers, laptops, remote controls. Cool. And hearing aids. So, so it's a killer product. Uh, so I just invite anybody that watches this video, please reach out to me or James. I'll put our contact information below. But uh, thanks, James, for, sure. uh, Thank for you, having us here today. And look forward to getting your requests for purchase orders. All right. Thank Take you. care. Have a great day. Bye-bye.